morning everybody we're starting off a little bit different this week with a uh, on location shoot at my place of employment we are at fx motorsports because my boss has kindly offered us the use of the paint booth we have here to spray the polyurethane on our guitar uh, he's also kind of a guitar guy himself and uh, is invested in this build as well as i am so uh here we go we've got our booth let's see if we can make something pretty now I didn't film the entire process for finishing here, but I did end up putting about 12 coats of polyurethane on, these, on this guitar. Partially to make sure I had an extra durable finish and partially to compensate for my inexperience working with spray finish. I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room to level out any mistakes I made. Did this over the course of about three days with about five coats a day going on. I uh, got that all finished up, taken up a valuable resource at my job to do so. Thankfully my uh, boss wasn't too worried about it. Fresh off the hooks there, this is kind of what the finish looked like. Looked pretty good, definitely need to be leveled out, but it, boy it brought that finish to life. And we're back in our usual workspace. Another big shout out real quick to FX Motorsports and their owner Craig for letting us use their professional spray booth to get a nice finish on that guitar and not have to worry about all the dust floating around this environment. Uh, but now that we've got that taken care of, back to the business at hand, let's see if we can get this thing sanded down, finished up, polished, get some fretwork and electronics in it, and uh, see how this thing turns out. Right, first up is uh, leveling out all those little orange peel effects that we had going on from the spray booth. Did some wet sanding from 600 grit up to 1000 grit. I uh, started out trying to go at 800 grit to 1000 and uh, just, just realized I needed a little bit more to get rid of the bottom layer to, to really flatten it out. So I went 600 up to 1000, ended up I think going up to two or 3000 in the end before we uh, went in and did some buffing. Used some of the Stumac compounds, starting with the fine and then going to the super fine. Probably should have ended up getting some of the medium, but uh, time and money and all that. I uh, figured if you sit there long enough with the fine, it'll get the job done. Which is not inaccurate, but it would have been much easier if I'd had a bottle of the medium as well. Matter of fact, my uh, friend who works on guitars for a living, who cameos later in the video, uh, swears by the medium and that's all he uses to match most factory finishes. Anything beyond that is pretty much only the uh, quality you see on a custom instrument. Gave the neck and headstock the same treatment as the body of course. And it was a little tricky getting the uh, spaces in between those frets buffed. Ended up going in by hand to do some of that. Here we are gluing in the magnets for the control cavity covers, putting in the string ferrules, I love those three body string ferrules but I may see if I can find some that have a little lip overhang for the next job just to uh, try and hide any problems that happen from drilling those holes. Neck ferrules. Those I love the look of. Although I wish that the uh, screws that they were designed to work with filled that whole ferrule. I think it would just look nice. Not that anything looks wrong with the way they are now. A little bit of hand buffing and hand cleaning here. I did use the uh, orbital buffer for most of the job, but in the tight curves and things like that, that's where I definitely got in and did it by hand. Next up for wiring the electronics. I uh, managed to get a hold of a set of Fishman Fluence humbucker pickups uh, through my buddy who works on guitars actually. Uh, he had come across a pair that uh, he was willing to sell me.
And then once everything had dried glue wise, we went ahead and drilled out the holes for the screws to go through there. Made it nice and easy when you have the ferrule as a uh, guide to make sure you don't wander. Got the neck in, which should have been a two person job drilling these holes, holding that neck in tightly, but boy, it was a tight fit to start with. So the uh, pressure of the neck itself held it in so I could drill those holes. Ended up having to sand out a little extra room on the tuning holes. I think some of the finish may have gotten in there and shrunk the holes that I had drilled out previously just a little bit. Always make sure to mark your uh, drill bits with a little bit of tape or something like that when you're doing shallow holes. Definitely don't want to go too far. Go straight through that beautiful finish that we just spent all that time putting on. And by the time we got to putting this hardware on, it really felt like this thing was coming alive, I tell you. Got the uh, strap mounts there. Not with the elliptical ones, just to try and keep things from falling off because anything I can do to keep this guitar beautiful for as long as possible. Did a flush mounted jack just because I think those look gorgeous, which just barely fits with that uh, little bit of chamfer I've got on the edge going around. A few knobs. The uh, toe knob in the middle is a push pull which uh, changes the voicing for the coils. Got a rotary five-way switch, which wires up the same way as a super switch I've discovered. And I've also discovered that pretty much nobody but PRS uses them, so good luck finding wiring diagrams. Now it's time to get to the fretwork. Level out the neck, first of all. Tape off everything. I actually started working on it and forgot to do this step initially and had to back up, <laughs> go retape it all. And then here we go, I'm marking the tops of the frets before we level out the frets. and then go into crown the frets. After doing some crowning and end beveling there for those frets, we went in and of course polished the frets, first with fret rubbers, then with some jeweler's rouge on a Dremel. While I'm thinking about it, let me get ahead of myself and say after the fret work, we do have a cameo appearance by uh, my oldest friend, professional guitar repair technician for the last decade, who by his own estimate has worked on probably over 10,000 guitars. So uh, he had offered early in the competition to help me make the nut for this guitar. And I took him up on it to the point where I've been begging him for help with it during his very busy schedule this time of year. <laughs> and he has graciously helped us out here. Not only has this man been working on guitars for the majority of his life and other instruments as well, 
the, uh, no, he's the term is one of the bands that invented crab core music. And as that offers from other bands to be their touring repair tech gig musician as well. This man has forgotten more about guitars than I'll ever know. And I'm just glad I can call him my friend and the godfather of my child. But uh, rather than bother you too much with my praises of the man, I'll let him kind of speak for himself and show you some of the video we got together as we worked on the nut a few nights ago. So, Taylor, like other guitar manufacturers, will tell you that 19 thousandths of an inch is your starting point for filing a nut. That number comes from what they consider to be a perfectly made guitar, right? So, this could require some truss rod adjustment. The lowest action I've ever seen actually work on a car, on a guitar, is about six to nine thousandths. And I don't, oh, I don't know why, I don't know why it worked. I don't know why it happened. It was like a majesty, like a John Petrucci, mm -hmm. Ernie Ball, you know. I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to act for the camera. How's it going? It's doing good. <laughs> you sound like you know a hell of a lot more than I do, so you're... I'm just reality. trying to sound like an infomercial guy, you know, like I'm trying to channel my Brian Mays. <laughs> I'm sure I've told you this, when you're doing those slots, you want to do a slight mm -hmm. side to side, yeah. widen the slot just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Going about, I don't know, maybe 20 degrees on either side, definitely not getting closer to 45. Mm -hmm. But just wanting to make sure that that slot at the bottom has a little wide enough to accommodate the 16, 17, 18 gauge string. Because one thing they don't tell you about these Stumac gauges is that on the very bottom, even though they are sized to each string gauge, at the very bottom they're flat. And mm -hmm. if you look at it, it's it's a square sort of mm -hmm. filing pattern that it leaves. Gotcha. Um, so when you rotate it back and forth, that actually is what gives it a nice roundness on the bottom. Every time you file nut slots, you want to angle them backwards towards the headstock so that the contact point is the the very closest point towards the fretboard. <sighs> okay, so we just hit it. You can see where we just mm -hmm. hit our first indentation yep. onto the metal there. Cool. So that's probably where we want to stop yes. on that one for the moment. You see how I'm kind of angling mm -hmm. yep. little, like with the headstock? Because you, you want, want the string mm -hmm. to the highest point, you want to be the far edge, the closest edge towards the bridge, right? right. For the intonation. Absolutely. I almost know this guitar is going to be drop tuned at some point, so I'm going to go ahead and file the slot wide enough for a 50, 52 gauge string, you know? Okay. Um, now because this is on the left edge of the fingerboard, I'm pressing right, even though I'm, I'm trying to keep everything straight down, I'm pressing with a right angle to try and keep that slot worked towards the inside of the neck. Now we can go ahead and shape the nut. We can we can give it the the radius that matches the fretboard that we want to see. Um, but the string slots themselves should be almost exactly where they need to be. Out. So what you're telling me is, if I built a classical guitar, there would be fewer steps in the process. Oh, so many fewer, but they're so much more important. Some 3M flexible polishing paper. What it's called. This is about the equivalent of a 600 grip. I am such a big fan. And after that fun night, about all that was left was stringing it up, getting it in tune, and making sure everything played correctly. Set the bridge height a little bit to get the action where we wanted it. Already set the truss rod to get it to where it needed to be. Tune it up, let the string settle a little bit, and then I couldn't help myself, I had to jam for a few minutes just to test it out. Luckily, it's safe to say everything worked just fine. Hmm. 
Thank you so much for following me through this journey in the Great Guitar Build Off 2022. That's about it for this video. Uh, but if you want to see some good glamour shots of this guitar once everything's all ready to roll, strings clipped and everything like that, stay tuned for the supercut video that I'm going to start editing as soon as this one goes live. It's been a heck of a year. Glad I got to participate again. And here's hoping to another great year of Great Guitar Build Off coming soon. Could I possibly trouble you for another cup of coffee? Absolutely.